the subject of today's press briefing is to set out an alternative roadmap on behalf of the MDC Alliance to end Zimbabwe's international isolation. We apologize for the late start. I think you can all see the Zanukia thugs that are gathered outside. We're just waiting for the situation to, to die down before we, we started. But nonetheless, we continue. Before we get into the main subject of our presser, a few remarks. At the start of this year, President Nelson Chamisa articulated our agenda for 2021, which remains anchored on five pillars. These five pillars include a people's agenda, a reform agenda, a government agenda, a global advocacy agenda, and a broad alliance agenda. It's in this context, particularly of the people's agenda, that we've seen the president embark on a citizen conversation tour, which is going to be conducted throughout all the provinces of Zimbabwe. So far, he's covered Mashingo province and Manukaland province. I think we all saw from the coverage of that uh, tour, that Meet the People tour, that he's been resoundingly welcomed in every village, in every town, in every city that he's visited. The key message that we get from the citizens that we continue to engage is that Zimbabwe's crisis continues to deepen. The, the crisis is permeated by poverty, it's permeated by injustice, and it's permeated by chronic corruption. We continue to see the political implosion <laughs> uh, which calls for deep systemic political reform. As the MDC Alliance, we continue to call for electoral reforms, political reforms, and economic reforms as set out in our reload documents so that Zimbabwe can return to legitimacy and democracy. We continue our call for all citizens to converge uh, around the idea of transformation so that as we gear towards 2023, we form a broad alliance that can win Zimbabwe for change. Without further ado, I'm going to defer proceedings to the Vice President of the MDC Alliance, Professor Welshman Rube, who's also overly in charge of matters of uh, international diplomacy and relations, who's going to cover the subject of today's presser, which is uh, Zimbabwe's return, or the roadmap for a return for Zimbabwe uh, from its period of international isolation. I think it's been quite topical uh, over the last few weeks. Um, after he's done, I'm going to field just a few questions, so please make sure you stay behind for, for that. Thank you. Without further ado, Prof. Mugge. Thank you very much. Um, uh, opening remarks in respect of uh, this presentation. Uh, um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me, before I go to uh, the subject matter of this press conference, uh, acknowledge the presence of the rest of the leadership of the MCC uh, who join us uh, today for this uh, press conference. Uh, first, we know the Vice President. Honorable and I did on the immediate right. Uh, on my immediate left, uh, uh, let us uh, such a uh, international uh, affairs uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the party uh, under which portfolio is that is best of all. Uh, on uh, her left uh, is, of course, uh, Honorable James Timber, the uh, uh, Secretary for Presidential Affairs in the uh, President's Office. Uh, on his left is last Mandama, uh, the newly appointed uh, Secretary for Research and Policy in the Standing Committee of the Party. Uh, hiding uh, behind me is the uh, young man uh, whom you, you know very well, Ostalo Street Suziva, uh, who deputizes Bazai, who has spoken uh, to you. Um, in 
introduce uh, uh, any any favor. Uh, when it comes to present time, I try to uh, lead in fielding those questions, and any of the uh, team members who are here uh, will be welcome to assist in answering any question. Um, we all are aware that Zimbabwe has made from crisis to crisis for a, a very, very long time. Uh, a crisis which uh, is essentially a political crisis, uh, a crisis uh, of uh, legitimacy in that uh, over several decades now we have had disputed election after disputed election. And these disputed elections arise because of the huge deficit in governance, which is manifested most sharply during election time. The issues relating to, to the rule of law, the capture of, uh, of the court, which is uh, reached unprecedented levels, level which we never experienced it during Mugabe's rule. Um, the, uh, the violence that uh, is taking place continuously um, is epitomized by what you see outside, the constant, continuous intimidation uh, and <coughs> violation of our, of our basic rights to, to have people gather outside here today uh, in order to seek to intimidate us from exercising our political rights just uh, establishes uh, what is wrong uh, with Zimbabwe. But I have already referred uh, to what is happening, what has been happening during the President uh, Rural Outreach Program, uh, what happened in Mapingo, what happened in Manikalen, uh, the use of firearms, literally assassination attempts, uh, the uh, assaults on some of our uh, activists on the ground, you've seen the pictures, you've uh, heard the LTOs, they've been hospitalized, and that sort of thing. And uh, it, it is clear that uh, those that uh, govern us today have uh, no respect whatsoever of the constitution of the country, have no respect for the rule of law, they have no respect for our uh, fundamental freedoms as enshrined in the constitution. Uh, they constantly, constantly are harassing the people of this country. They are depriving us of our elementary uh, freedom, literally uh, the oxygen that we need politically to, to breathe. And uh, it is in this context that uh, we therefore uh, welcome um, the statement that was emanated uh, in the last day. Uh, 48 hours uh, from uh, from SADC um, on on uh, sanctions. What is, what is um, important about that statement? Those of you who have had a look at it, uh, are paragraph five and six in that statement. Uh, for for the first time in a long long time, uh, SADC is clearly recognizing that the crisis in Zimbabwe is multifaceted, is recognizing that the international isolation of Zimbabwe is as a result of uh, the bilateral and multilateral disputes that mm -hmm. Zimbabwe has with the international community in terms of uh, Zimbabwe fulfilling its international obligations under various international treaties on human rights, on governance, Etc. Et if you if you read carefully that statement, you you will see the acknowledgement uh, by by Sata that uh, Zimbabwe needs uh, international support with the reform agenda. Of course, the statement is bare bone. We uh, need to talk about what uh, is that reform agenda when Zimbabwe engages the international uh, community on a reform agenda we must have engaged with ourselves first. It is imperative that you can't going to talk to the Americans, to the British, to the EU, when you have not talked to yourself. That reform agenda 
need to be national, need to be locally grounded, need to be agreed to by the stakeholders uh, in Zimbabwe, which basically means the political parties, civil society, ZANU-PF as, as the ruling part. We need to have a conversation about that reform agenda. It cannot be a reform agenda unilaterally adopted or fronted by ZANU-PF. So, so, but however, we welcome this recognition that there is need for reform in Zimbabwe, there is need for Zimbabwe to engage with the international community on that reform agenda. We, on our part, say we must engage with ourselves as Zimbabwe on that reform agenda, so that when we engage with the international community, we are of the same mind as to what needs to be done. Let's never forget that the international isolation of Zimbabwe began a long time ago and uh, was, uh, in fact, a, a result of our own actions. You will remember there were times when we uh, expelled from Zimbabwe international observers. We did not allow them to observe our elections. We did all sorts of things that we should not have done. And that was the genesis of uh, the international community beginning to take uh, restrictive measures to make sanctions, uh, generally to make sanctions against individuals in Zimbabwe because of our own conduct. And we need to go back to that. What did we do uh, and what should we not have done? Um, there's also paragraph six of uh, the, the SADAC uh, statement. And, and that paragraph six is, is, is critically uh, important. Uh, because, uh, again, for the first time, all along, SADAC is uh, uh, supported Zimbabwe on the lifting of sanctions, has called for the lifting of sanctions. Uh, even when we're in government, we were all in the re-engagement committee uh, to, to discuss with the international community uh, on, the, on the issue of the international isolation of Zimbabwe. But there's always been a reluctance of acknowledging the core deficit which uh, resulted in the international community acting in the manner that it acted in isolating us. The, the uh, issues around the rule of law, the deficit on democracy, the deficit on good governance, the violations of human rights, they are all captured for the first time in that uh, SADAC uh, uh, statement. And, and we welcome that. And uh, we assume that SADAC would not have issued a statement such as this without consulting all the member states of SADAC, including Zimbabwe. Uh, in that assumption, therefore, we, we further assume that uh, the Zimbabwean government has accepted all the paragraphs which are contained in this statement and has accepted the link between uh, the inter international isolation of the country and the things which are covered in paragraph five and six of the community. And, and this, in my view, uh, in the view of the MTC Alliance, uh, opens uh, opportunities uh, for the country, for us to accept and to welcome this sort of position, to talk to ourselves, to have dialogue among ourselves, and hopefully to agree on the things that we need to do. Uh, the 2023 elections are not far away, less than two years away. Uh, we are already in campaign season. The, the, the behavior of trying to close the democratic space right now is of course informed by the fact that the elections are around the corner. And, and you see the old bad habit of trying to deprive the people of Zimbabwe their most fundamental right. Their, the most fundamental right of the people of Zimbabwe is their sovereignty. And this, our sovereignty as a people is uh, captured in our right to determine who must lead us, what kind of government must uh, run the country. That's the most fundamental of all the freedoms. Our right to choose our government and in that, unmolested, unharassed, be free of violence. And uh, we say therefore, say therefore, as we approach 2023, it is important to respect that fundamental right of the people of Zimbabwe to constitute a government of their choice. Without the things that we see, 
without the things that we are seeing right outside uh, these premises today, without all the things that we have seen being done to our president as he has uh, traveled around the country. And you, you can't have a legitimate election uh, unless and until you pull back from this thing. Let me end by saying this. The most important reform do not cost money. They cost absolutely nothing. They don't even cost time. They actually save money. <laughs> and, and those reforms are leave the people alone. Allow people to freely assemble. Allow people to express themselves. Allow free political activity. It doesn't cost anybody anything to do those things. And of course there are things which cost money, which must be done. Do proper voter registration, have voter registration outreach programs, make sure every Zimbabwean who has turned over 18 years has the necessary and requisite document to register as a voter, that you have registration centers closest to the people who need them, that you have as little hindrance as possible to registration of voters. Any government which is founded on the will of the people must consider it's its duty to make sure that each and every citizen is registered to vote so that each and every citizen can participate in the process of the constitution of a government of the country. So uh, those things must be done in respect of voter registration. Those things must be done in ensuring that the voter's role is accurate, all the things that are necessary for our democracy to thrive. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, those are my respect, re remarks uh, at this uh, uh, pressure. I now hand back to Tufati. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Vice President. I'm going to ask you to just stand there. We're going to field a few questions, primarily on the subject uh, of today's press. So please, as usual, put your hand up, identify yourself, give us your name and the news house that you're coming from, and we'll take your question. Please feel free to use vernacular uh, if that's what your news house uses or if that's what you're comfortable with. We're open uh, to, to uh, an inclusive uh, question and answer section. Yes, sir. And please, can I ask that you speak up so that everybody uh, can hear? Thank you. My name is Takuchi Ambaku from Zim Papers TV. Uh, the Vice President highlighted that one of the key uh, statements or areas that SADA touched on was the issue of internal dialogue. On the other side, Zanu Piedi is saying, but Pollard, what's your position now? Isn't it better to have been part of Pollard and try to make it work within? Isn't that a form of internal dialogue? Thank you. Thank you, Taku. In, in a democracy, one of the fundamental things is a consultation. Pollard was born unilaterally, was constituted by a President Nangakwa alone without consulting anybody. The second principle is that if you are to have a seat somewhere where there is dialogue, concerning the rights of people. You must represent a constituency. I, I, I can't claim to want a seat at a dialogue table to re represent myself and my wife. It's not sensible, it's not sensible. You must have a constituency. The people who have a constituency politically in this country are those political parties who were supported by Zimbabwe in at, at the last election, either in the presidential election by the vote that you got, or in the parliamentary elections or the local government election. <laughs> and uh, if you therefore say, let's talk about who should be at the table, let's talk about it, and let's agree who should be there. But do not dictate to us who should be there. Uh, for one, the MDC Alliance cannot agree to be at the table with uh, individuals who have no political party, 
who just ran as presidential candidates, who were getting zero votes in the majority of polling stations, who their combined total are less than 0.001% of votes. They have no organization, they are accountable to no one. So, so we're saying, let us talk about that. We do not believe you should be at any dialogue table because you simply contested the presidential election. If at the very least it had been said, Pollard is based on the political parties with representation in parliament, we will say, fine, at least there is a constituency that you, that you represent. But we, we do not support unilateral. We do not support that anyone, even if you hold the office of president. After all, that office of president is not your office. It is an office that you are put in by the people of Zimbabwe. It is a representative office. And you therefore need to have dialogue with, with the people in order to establish a, a viable framework for dialogue. We don't believe that Pollard is a viable framework for dialogue. With the greatest respect, with the greatest respect. I thank you. Thank you. Next question. Are there no questions? Hmm. People aren't going to be in, blowing up my inbox after this to say, what's your <laughs> position on? <laughs> Please feel free as well to use vernacular if that's what you're comfortable with. Those who've just arrived, we've opened the floor up to questions. <coughs> For those who have been, please feel free to put up your hand. Well, people are happy. If, if there are no questions, all that remains is for me to thank you all very much. As the MDC Alliance, we continue our call uh, to all citizens. Let's come together. None but ourselves are going to rescue uh, Zimbabwe from the crisis that we find ourselves in. So let's all be part of the broad alliance uh, that's going to win Zimbabwe for change. We are absolutely confident in the able leadership of the people's president advocate nelson chamisa who's going to lead the charge and be and create a convening platform for all zimbabweans to come together thank you very much and have a good day thank you